Hi beautiful, welcome to my channel. Today's video is my Sephora recommendations video. I have all of my favorite Sephora products right here in front of me. And believe it or not, I think I did an okay job in narrowing down my choices this time around. Sephora is my favorite place to shop majority of my makeup collection. I feel like comes from Sephora, so it was very hard to narrow this down for me. However, I feel like I did a pretty good job. I'm going to start with makeup and then I do have some skincare slash hair care slash fragrance products that I'll talk about towards the end of the video as well. If you guys are excited, don't forget to give this one a thumbs up and let's go ahead and get started. Obviously, all of these recommendations are intended for you to shop the Sephora Fall Savings event, which is starting for Rouge customers on the 27th. Rouge customers get 20% off of their purchases. And then for VIBs and insiders, the sale starts on the 31st. So let's get your guys' basket ready. If you end up shopping any of my recommendations, please do so using the links I'm leaving you down below in the description box. Every single product I'll talk about today is listed down there in the description box with a link. And whenever you shop for my links, it helps out my channel. You can also shop through YouTube on the little icon on the screen. Anyways, this time around, I'm going to get started with makeup primers. And I have three makeup primers that I use interchangeably all the time, depending on what I'm doing. The first one I'm going to mention I use when I want my pores to be blurred, when I want my pores to go away, to be invisible. It is the one that I am wearing today underneath my makeup and that is this beauty right here from Danessa Myricks. This is the Danessa Myricks Yummy Skin Balm. I have mine in shade 3 and I love the tinted ones because shade 3 also helps cover up my retinas quite a bit. I use very, very little of this one, just on the areas where my pores are a bit more prominent, like right here on this part of my cheekbone and the center of my forehead, and I just really work in this product and it blurs my pores super easily. So I absolutely love this primer. And if you have dry skin like I do and you want something that is going to help make your pores disappear, I do highly recommend this one. Sometimes, depending on which foundation I'm wearing, I need my primer to help me for that foundation not to look dry because I have desert dry skin. And the primer that I have found that definitely makes any foundation I put on top look nice and glowy and it takes any dryness away is this primer right here from Freck Beauty. This is the Rich Primer. It's a super slimy primer. It almost feels like you're putting on goo. <laughs> Take a look right there. But I promise you this sinks right into the skin. It makes everything slip very easily on top and it gives your skin this fantastic, fantastic radiance to it, which translates to whatever foundation you put on top. So if you have any foundation in your collection that can sometimes just go a bit dry on you throughout the day, I recommend that you use this primer underneath and I promise you this is so hydrating it'll solve that issue for you. Third and last primer is actually my most used, most recommended primer and it's not just a primer, it's also a moisturizer. You guys know I use this on a daily basis, even underneath the two primers I already mentioned, I always have my Magic Cream on. Now Magic Cream is a moisturizer, but it is a very hydrating moisturizer that has a beautiful slip to it. And so when I worked for the brand in their training, they always told me Magic Cream is the perfect primer for makeup application as well. And half the time, whenever I reach for one of my favorite foundations that I know wear beautifully on me throughout the day, this is the only thing I put underneath my foundation. Magic Cream foundation on top and I am good to go. If I'm getting ready for something that I want my skin to look flawless for, I'll go with the Danessa Myricks primer on top of the Magic Cream. And if I go for a full coverage foundation, those tend to look a little dry on me. Then I reach for the rich primer right here, but I always, always have my Magic Cream on. So now that Sephora is having a sale, this is the perfect time to get your hands on Magic Cream for sure. Let's move on to foundation. And I have three new foundations that I'm going to recommend in today's video because they came out between the spring sale and now, and I have fallen in love with these foundations and I feel like you guys need them. Foundation number one, and I think this might just be my most recommended thing because it is different and it is so multi-purpose, is this right here. This is the Fenty Blurring Stick Foundation. 
This foundation I love because you can literally use it for the lightest amount of coverage, like a no makeup makeup look. You do a couple of stripes of this on each cheek, blend it out with a brush and you have a beautiful no makeup makeup look. I usually like a medium coverage foundation, so I do a few more stripes on each side. I blend it in with a brush. It covers all of my redness, but it stays looking extremely beautiful and natural. And just like the name suggests, I do believe it blurs out the pores and I feel like it looks fantastic on me for hours on end. Now, I always put this on top of a very hydrated base. I always put it on top of Magic Cream and I tend not to go for a full coverage with it because I have found that if I want a full coverage with it, it does kind of look apparent on the skin but when I do a medium coverage which is my preferred way anyways especially because this has been a product that I use more so on a daily basis whenever I go for a medium coverage I distribute it well on my face and it sinks right into the skin and it looks extremely natural I can still see my freckles through but all of the redness is fully gone and this is honestly one of my favorite products I've tried this year I feel like it's a pretty innovative foundation stick I've never had the best luck when it comes to foundation sticks, I've tried the Makeup Forever one in the past, the Hourglass one, and those are like too full coverage, too thick on my dry skin. They don't melt in the way I want them to. And then I've tried other foundation sticks that are just like not enough coverage. With this one, you can customize the coverage. It sinks right into the skin. It looks extremely natural. I don't know what else to tell you to convince you to get this because you need it. It's fantastic. From what I have seen, it looks like it works on all skin types as well. So honestly, I can't recommend this one enough. This is my most recommended foundation product um, from this video and I absolutely love it. I just swiped it on the back of my hand and I'm going to just melt it in for you to see how absolutely natural this foundation stick looks. Moving on to the foundation that I am wearing right now, which is pretty new, but I have been obsessed with it because it looks so natural. It has a beautiful medium buildable coverage and it wears for hours and hours on end. I'm talking about the new Glossier foundation. This is called the Stretch It Foundation, Stretch It Fluid Foundation. I don't know what witchcraft they put in this formula, but this foundation is fantastic. This is another one that everyone I've heard talking about this foundation loves it. <laughs> and so do I. It has a beautiful medium coverage. You can build it up if you want to. It covers all of my redness, it covers my imperfections, and it has the most beautiful natural finish to it. It's not super glowy, it's not drying on my skin, it, it wears beautifully throughout the day. Any primer I've put it on top of, it works with. Anything I've added on top of the foundation um, melts right into it. It stays on forever. It's just amazing. The formula truly melts into the skin to make your skin look very natural but flawless at the same time. I love it, okay? If you've been thinking about this one, I highly recommend that you go for it. Third and last foundation recommendation is from Dior and it is this right here. This is a Dior Backstage Foundation. Dior reformulated their Backstage Foundation a few months ago. I had tried their original Backstage Foundation and it wasn't my favorite. However, I absolutely love this one. They made the foundation have more of a radiant finish. They made the foundation be more hydrating on the skin. And me having dry skin, those are definitely properties I look for in foundation. So I couldn't not try this one. And ever since I tried it, I fell in love with it. It has a beautiful creamy consistency, a medium to full coverage. I have mine in the shade 2N. It blends right into the skin. It has this beautiful, beautiful radiant finish to it. And most importantly, it wears all day on me without ever making me look dry. 10 out of 10 recommend this one. I think it's a bit more full coverage than the Glossier one, but honestly, they're pretty close. And then, like I said, my most recommended, especially for an everyday product, the Fenty Stick. Actually, there's one more difference between these two. I do find that the Dior one has a bit of a thicker consistency than the Glossier does. So this one is a bit more natural looking. This is a bit more full glam and then the most natural of all right here. 
Not everyone is an under eye color corrector person, but I am an under eye color corrector person through and through. I need an orangey product to put underneath my eyes to counteract the purpley hues that I normally have. And my favorite you can get on sale at Sephora now is I mean, mine looks so ugly. <laughs> it's this color corrector right here from Charlotte Tilbury. I use the shade 2 medium. I either grab it with my finger and just tap it underneath the eyes, or I sometimes grab it with a brush or the tip of a sponge. Honestly, it doesn't matter. It works wonders with anything I grab. It has a beautiful coverage. It cancels out the purpley hues underneath my eyes beautifully. If I'm going for a very, very natural look, I can use it by itself, but I usually like to put concealer on top of it. Honestly, my under eyes would not look as bright if I didn't have a color corrector. So I love this and I highly recommend it. With concealers, I'm also going with new products that I have fallen in love with in the past few months. I am super, super picky when it comes to concealers. If you watch my concealer reviews, you know I usually hate them all. However, lately the concealers that have been coming out are concealers that are exactly what I look for when it comes to concealers. Because my skin is dry, my under eyes can sometimes look a bit textured, my lines can look enhanced, which I don't love. And so my favorite concealers tend to have the thinnest texture with a medium coverage, and that is exactly what these right here have. Let me start by the most affordable one of the three, which is the Tower 28 Concealer. This is a concealer that is made in Italy. It's a serum concealer, and it has a beautiful lightweight formula to it. Take a look right there. I love that it has a radiant finish. I love that it has a super thin, blendable consistency, and that it covers everything I need covered underneath my eyes beautifully. This is definitely highly recommended. I love my under eyes every time I use it. This next one I put in my favorite products of this year so far video a few months ago, and it is the Very Valentino Concealer, which I did a review on this one and I did not like it because it didn't have enough coverage. But in my review video, I hadn't used it with my color corrector. And once I used it with my color corrector, I fell in love with this one. It has a super thin formula. It also has a beautiful radiant finish. And this one makes my under eyes look so bright. I absolutely love combining this one with my color corrector. See how it looks brighter than that one? I just love the brightness that this one gives my under eyes so much. I have it in the shade LN3 and it is absolutely fabulous. I can't believe I didn't put my Valentino foundation in this recommendations video. I totally should have, and I'm going to link it down below, and I do actually love it and recommend it. It has all of the properties I love in foundations. Check out the videos where I've reviewed it if you want to know more about it, but it is a fantastic, fantastic foundation, and the concealer is also one of my favorite products that I've tried this year. So love this one, love the brightness, love the texture. Third and last is a pretty new concealer, which is this one here, the Gucci one. I have mine in the shade 21 Neutral, and this is the concealer that I have underneath my eyes today. As you can see, it looks pretty great. It has a thin formula, it is nice and bright, a radiant finish as well. Just everything I love in concealers. It feels very hydrating. It looks amazing under my eyes all throughout the day. Honestly, these three concealers that I am mentioning today are very similar formulation-wise, so you can't go wrong with them. I absolutely love them all. The one with the least amount of coverage, probably the Very Valentino one. But like I said, since I use a color corrector all the time anyways, that doesn't bother me. It's fantastic. Let's move on to powders next, and the one that I have been using the most lately is hands down the Danessa Myricks Pink Powder right here. I love this one. I love the sifter that it has because it keeps things from getting too messy. I love the brightness that the pink hue that this powder has gives my skin. This is the powder that I'm wearing in the center of my face right now. It is fantastic. It is not too expensive. And, and most of all, I love how thin and undetectable this powder is on my dry skin. It gets rid of any shine that I don't want while still keeping my skin hydrated. It never makes my skin look dry. I absolutely love this one. 
it keeps selling out at Sephora. So at the time you're watching this video, I'm not sure if it'll be available because it keeps selling out and coming back in stock. Hopefully it is available. I highly, highly recommend this powder. This next powder I bought during the spring savings event from Sephora and I fell in love with it. I'm talking about the Givenchy Prisme May Leave Ray Powder. I have mine in shade three. This powder also gives the skin all of the brightness that I want. It's also an extremely thin powder that melts right into the skin. It never makes me feel or look dry. It honestly has all of the exact same properties that I told you that the Nessa Myricks palette has. Now this one is a bit bougier, it's a bit more expensive, and it does have a bit more of a scent to it. So I think my favorite out of the two might just be the Danessa Myricks one. That is how much I love this one. However, this is a very, very close second. And the only reason it's second recommendation is not the performance, because honestly, they perform the same in my opinion. The only reason it's second is because it is a bit more of an expensive product. If you like your makeup products to have a scent to them, you're going to like this one better because this one has a bit more of a floral scent to it. But usually I hear that more as a negative than a positive. <laughs> Anyways, I absolutely love this powder. It is brightening and it is perfection if you don't want your makeup to ever look crusty because it's so thin, it just melts right into the skin. Third and last, I always like to suggest a pressed powder and my favorite pressed powder continues to be the same, which is my Pat McGrath Labs Under Eye Setting Powder. Now this one is called Under Eye Setting Powder, but honestly, I use it wherever I want to, which tends to be the center of the face. So it under eyes, nose and forehead. This is the one that I have been working on for the past few months. It is almost gone. And then I opened a new one just to show you what it looks like when it's nice and new and shiny right here. I love this one. It is brightening. It's not a matte powder. It actually has a bit of reflection to it, which makes it great if you have dry skin. It is super thin, but you can build it up. I love applying this one with a very light brush, a very light layer of it, because it can build up to something that looks a little bit drier underneath my eyes. So a small, soft, fluffy brush is definitely the way to apply this one, and it looks fantastic under the eyes. Moving on to bronzing slash contouring products, and I have my four favorites here in front of me. I have two creams and two powders because I have been really into cream bronzer slash contour products. The one I have been using nonstop for the past few months is this right here from Westman Atelier. This is the Westman Atelier contour stick in the shade Biscuit. That is how much I have left of mine. We're getting down there. That is how much I have been using it lately. And the reason I love this one so much is because the shade Biscuit looks extremely natural on my skin. It gives me a very, very natural looking shadow and it works great on its own if I want a natural look or underneath any bronzer that I put on top of it. Today I'm wearing it with a bronzer on top and I just love the result of combining the two products. If you're looking for a contour stick that is easy to work with and that looks very, very natural, Biscuit from Westman Atelier is 100% the way to go. The packaging is extremely luxurious and I just can't seem to put it down as of late. So highly recommend it. This next one is not a contouring product. This is just a bronzer. It is from Rare Beauty. I have mine in the shade Happy Soul. As you can see, it's a lot warmer than Biscuit. And so this one, whenever I use it, I do use it on its own. It has a natural finish to it. It blends very easily, melts right into the skin. Now with this one, I don't need to put a bronzer over it because this is a bronzy shade. So whenever I use it, I do use it on its own and I prefer to use it during the summertime because that is when I want my skin to look truly bronzy, which is the color that this gives me. So if you're in the market for a beautiful cream bronzer, Happy Soul from Rare Beauty. Happy Soul is the shade that I use, so if we're shade twins, this one um, is the way to go. <laughs> Moving on to my powder bronzers, and when it comes to powder bronzers, I prefer bronzers that you build up. I prefer the bronzers that are not too pigmented because I like building them up rather than having to blend them down because I feel like that can sometimes turn to like mud, right? So I have two that I love. Um, the first one I want to mention is this one here from 
Charlotte Tilbury. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Refillable Bronzer and I have mine in shade 2 Medium. I could use 3 or 2 but like I said I prefer to build up my bronzer so 2 is the one from the 2 that I prefer. This one applies easily, blends easily, it builds up beautifully and I love combining bronzers like this one with my Westman Atelier Contour Stick because I find that I end up with the contour I desire and the level of bronziness I desire and because this is something that I slowly build up I can get it to look exactly how I want it to look and so I feel the same about the next bronzer I'm going to mention which is from Pat McGrath. This one came out I think at the beginning of this year and it's a Pat McGrath Divine Bronzer in Naked Desire. Naked Desire is the lightest shade Pat McGrath came out with but this one is my favorite because the shade that is one up from this one is a little bit warmer and I don't love my bronzers to have a super warm undertone to them. So this one, even though it's the lightest, again, I can build up very easily on top of a contouring product to get a finished look that is exactly what I want, that is not too much, that it's not too yellow, and that I built up to like the perfect amount of intensity. I'm a bit picky when it comes to bronzers, which is why I wanted to let you know exactly what I like in my bronzer. So if this sounds like something you would like as well, um, I highly recommend these two. The runner-up bronzer is the Gucci bronzer, which I've mentioned in other Sephora recommendations videos, and I love, but that one is pretty pigmented right away, and I haven't been reaching for it as much lately, so I didn't want to put it in this video. However, I do still love it, okay? <laughs> Moving on to blushes, and I have two liquid blushes that I want to recommend, as well as two powder formulas of blushes. If you want extremely pigmented, but also extremely extremely blendable liquid blushes. I love the Rare Beauty blush formula, of course, and I have two shades that I wanted to recommend to you. My most favorite shade from Rare Beauty blushes, hands down, is the shade Hope. It's this beautiful dusty pink color with one dot. I can do both of my cheeks because I like my blush not to be super intense, but as you can see, these blushes are extremely, extremely pigmented. If you're scared of putting them straight on your face, you can put the dot on the back of your hand and work it in with a brush from there. But I promise you, as long as you do one small dot on each cheek, you'll be good to go. Anyways, Hope is my favorite shade. And the other shade I love, if you like something a little bit warmer, is the shade Virtu. Virtu gives me this like sun tanned look to my cheeks that I absolutely love. Take a look right there at what that one looks like. I obviously wear these very sparingly, so you're seeing a lot on the back of my hand, but on my cheeks, it doesn't look as intense. One huge positive for the Rare Beauty blushes is definitely the fact that they'll last a lifetime because you need so little of the shade to make the blush work on your cheeks that you'll have those bottles forever. Now if these are a little bit scary for you and you're someone who likes a very light flush to the cheeks, I do have another blush to suggest to you that I absolutely love and that is the NARS Liquid Blush Formula. I have mine in the shade Behave and the shade Behave happens to be my favorite out of all of the NARS blushes that I've tried. As you can see, the application is kind of similar, but you'll see when I blend it out, these are not as intense and pigmented as the Rare Beauty ones. This formula is much more sheer than Rare Beauty, while still giving you a nice flush to the cheeks. And my favorite thing about this formulation is the beautiful, intense glow that you have on your cheeks when you wear this one. It's like you're wearing a highlighter without the need to put a highlighter on your cheek. These are fantastic. When it comes to powder blushes, the Gucci blush formula has had my heart ever since it came out. I absolutely love how buildable and beautiful these are while still being blurring on the cheeks and giving you this beautiful natural flush to the face. These are my top three favorite colors right here. I love the shade Silky Rose bright coral and radiant pink. 
check out the undertone difference between those three Gucci blushes. And as you can see by the back of my hand, they can be built up to be quite intense and pigmented. However, I like to use them very lightly just for a light flush on the cheeks. And they're very long lasting. They are blurring. They have this beautiful natural finish to them absolutely love them. Ever since this formula came out, it became one of my favorite blush formulas I have ever used. Um, if you've tried the Armani new blush formula, I feel like it can maybe kind of come close, but honestly, I much prefer the Gucci formula for blushes. Lastly, a blush that has been my favorite one for years and years on end and that I still reach for all of the time. Whenever I am not sure what blush to use, this is the one that I fall back on because I know that it looks good with anything that I put on or with anything that I have on on my face and that is the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk blush. This one I do a little swirl so that I mix the radiance with the blush and my favorite thing about this one is that it's this like very muted color with a hint of pink to it that looks extremely natural on the face. Without it being super in your face, it kind of blends seamlessly into the bronzer, giving your cheeks a little bit of a flush, but that is not too noticeable. I absolutely love this one. If you love a barely there flush on your face, this is the one for you. When it comes to highlighters, I only have two highlighters to suggest to you. These are the ones that I have fallen back on, the ones that I know that I can always trust and the ones that I trust most not to make my cheeks look super textured. My favorite one, the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Liquid Highlighter, which is the highlighter that I am wearing on my face today. I applied quite a lot today, as you can see, but even with this much, you can't really see texture on my skin, and that is my favorite thing about this one. It has this really beautiful brightness, this really beautiful radiance to it that makes your cheeks glow like crazy without enhancing texture. So if you ask me, like, one highlighter suggestion. This one here would be it, the Charlotte Tilbury Liquid Highlighter in Pillow Talk. I also really love the slight hint of pink that this highlighter has. And then my other favorite highlighter formula is a powder highlighter, this time from Rare Beauty. These are very, very delicate. This color is the only one that I haven't broken yet, and that is the Rare Beauty highlighter in the shade Mesmerize. Honestly, any of the shades that this highlighter comes in look beautiful because the formula is beautiful. It's this really stunning, super thin, baked formula that also doesn't enhance texture and it's extremely extremely shiny on top of your cheekbone so if you're looking for a very intense powder highlighter that is not going to enhance your texture definitely go for the rare beauty ones moving on to brows i can't not mention this product that i'm about to mention however it has been sold out for at least a month i'm hoping maybe It'll come back in stock for the Sephora sale, but I'm not sure whether or not it will. I'm talking about my absolute most favorite eyebrow gel I have ever tried, which is the Rare Beauty Eyebrow Gel. This is the one on my eyebrows right now. Last time it was in stock, I purchased two of them, so I am stuck up on it until it comes back, which I'm hoping will happen soon. Anyways, this is like glue for the eyebrows. I have pretty stubborn eyebrow hairs, and this keeps them laminated looking on my face the whole day. This eyebrow gel does not budge. It does not fail me. It is fantastic, and my favorite thing about it is that I have other eyebrow gels, which I'll mention next, that do the same, but this one has this little cute container with this teeny tiny brush, and it's just so easy to fluff up your eyebrows with it. It's my favorite. It's just fantastic. I just love the way my brows look whenever I use this one. However, if that one is still out of stock, a good second choice is the Brow Freeze from Anastasia, which is what I was using up until this one launched. The con with this one is that you do have to use a separate brush to grab the product out of the jar and lift your brows and comb your brows with the separate brush. However, it does have a positive to the Rare Beauty Eyebrow Gel and that is the fact that it has so much product in it that it lasts for a very, very long time. This I only have to replace maybe 
every six to eight months if I'm using it on a daily basis versus the Rare Beauty Eyebrow Gel because it's much smaller. I have to repurchase every month and a half or so. So there is advantages to both of them. This one just has a stronger hold, but this one um, will save you some money. <laughs> Moving on to eyebrow pencils. There is two eyebrow pencils that I just never stop using. Um, the one I'm wearing today, which is this one here, is the Benefit Precisely My Brow Pencil. And I love this one because it is very pigmented. It has a very thin tip to it. It wears beautifully on top of the gel. It doesn't fade or anything. And it's a very long lasting pencil with a very thin, precise tip to it. Now, if you want to go for the more affordable option, I absolutely love the Charlotte Tilbury Refillable pencil and the reason this one is more affordable is because it is refillable so you only have to pay for the actual pencil ones and then every time you need to restock on it all you need is the little inside of the pencil so the first time you buy it is 25 and then whenever you need to restock on your refill which um, I need to right now you only pay $15 for the refill and you're good to go this is super pigmented it also works amazing on top of brow gels it lasts for a very long time and it has a bit of a thicker tip but it is very nice and very precise and I've never had trouble with the tip of this one I feel like it fills in my eyebrows quite fast so I absolutely love it. Moving on to eyes, and I'm not going to be mentioning eyeshadow palettes in today's video because I'll do a separate video just focused on eyeshadow palettes. But moving on to eyes, I um, have an eyelid primer to suggest to you. This is the only one that I reach for whenever I go for an eyelid primer. And that is the Rare Beauty Eyeshadow Primer right here. It has a little bit of coverage to it that brightens and makes the eyelids look even. But my favorite thing about this one is definitely the consistency. It doesn't make the eyelids too sticky where you can't blend the products properly over top, but it does still do a fantastic job at making the eyeshadows look very pigmented and keeping everything where you want it to go. So honestly, ever since I tried this Rare Beauty eyeshadow primer, I haven't found anything that I like quite as much. This is my second bottle of it and I simply love it. Even compared to like the Natasha Denona eyelid primer, the Pat McGrath eyelid primer, this one in my opinion is superior. For mascara, I have two mascaras that I have been using non-stop for the past few months that I cannot possibly recommend enough. The first one and the most recommended one is the one that I'm wearing on my eyelashes right now. As you can see, my lashes look very full and very long and very voluminous and that is all thanks to this mascara right here from Give. It is called the Can't Stop Staring Mascara. It has this fabulous rubber wand. I was a non-rubber wand believer until this one came around, okay? So it has this fabulous rubber wand that has different size bristles depending on how you turn it. And then it has the little ball at the tip right there that really helps with the inner corner of the eyes. One thing I get asked often when it comes to this mascara is whether it's supposed to be as thick as it is. And I can promise you it is just a thick mascara, but that is a positive thing because it builds up immediately and it gives you crazy volume and crazy length instantly. I love it. I've had mine for maybe five months now, which is more than what you're supposed to have mascaras for. And as you can see, it still works pretty nicely. I feel like it's getting to the point where it's not separating as much as it used to. I have a couple of clumps on this eye and that would not have happened if the mascara was fresh still. But I've had it for five months and I've used it constantly ever since I got it. I love it. It's my favorite, favorite mascara. It never smudges. If you get it on the eyelids up here, it dries so fast that when you go with the Q-tip, it immediately like pops out. Just chef's kiss. I love it. It's my favorite mascara I've had in a very long time. Now a close second if you want a more liquidy formula and a brush that has not rubber bristles, that has regular bristles I guess, I absolutely love the new Anastasia mascara as well. This one is called the Lash Sculpt Mascara and I find this one very very easy to apply. One con that the Give Mascara has is that I feel like I have to kind of patiently 
build it up to my desired level of intensity and so it takes a little bit of patience to build it up now whenever I am in a rush the mascara I'm reaching for is the Anastasia one because it's liquidy but it gives you a lot of volume so it builds up in an instant on your eyelids I don't find that it smudges on me I find that it gives me fabulous looking lashes I can't be as precise with this one as I am with the give one but I have no complaints with the performance of this one it's nice and liquidy it doesn't clump my lashes together it gives me a ton of length and volume and I absolutely love it moving on to liquid eyeliner I absolutely love the Urban Decay 24 7 ink liner I have mine in the shade black which is the only shade I own but they do have different colors if you're interested I'm just not that much of a liquid eyeliner person so when I go for liquid eyeliner I do black <laughs> anyways I absolutely love the brush tip of this one it glides easily it's very easy to control the thickness that you want your line to be and one of my favorite things is the design of this eyeliner I love that grippy thingy that they did on this one because once again that also makes it very easy to control where you want your line so if you're looking for a fantastic liquid liner this one here from Urban Decay is my favorite when it comes to pencil eyeliners and I use pencil eyeliners a whole lot I use them every time I do my makeup because I always put a pencil liner in the waterline of my eye I have two favorite brands that I always go for I love Charlotte Tilbury eyeliners and I have two suggestions from Charlotte Tilbury this double-ended one here is fantastic it has a brown and a cream color I'm wearing the brown side of this one um, in the waterline today and then one of my all-time favorite liners because the color is so special is the pillow talk eyeliner from Charlotte Tilbury this one has a hint of red to it it's almost like a burgundy liner and it really makes my light eyes pop like crazy so I love it I use the pillow talk eyeliner all the time as you can see by the size of it it is fantastic now when I go for a pop of color in the waterline the ones that I reach for most are always the glossier eyeliners you, you don't go here <laughs> these glossier eyeliners right here we have lilac we have this light green shade we have a forest green we have this warm one there's black there's brown there's a purple one somewhere in my collection there so if you're looking for eyeliners that have amazing colorful formulas Glossier number one eyeliner pencil is 100% the way to go. I'm done with the eyes because like I said, I'll do a video dedicated solely to the eyeshadow palettes that are my favorite at Sephora right now. So let's move on to lips. Actually, let's do a setting spray real quick because I only have one suggestion. If you're looking for a fantastic setting spray, the Charlotte Tilbury one is my only one that I can possibly recommend to you. It keeps your makeup on forever in a day and it is alcohol free so if you have dry or sensitive skin which I have both <laughs> this one is definitely the one to go it also has a very fine mister and it smells amazing so there's honestly not a more perfect setting spray this is my travel size one that I just refilled with my big size one I usually get the big ones and I just refill this one because it's just so much more comfortable to use anyways like I said a better setting spray does not exist for lips I'm starting with lip liner and don't laugh at me but all of my lip liners are super tiny take a look right here <laughs> these are obviously very very loved lip liners let's start with the shortest one Charlotte Tilbury iconic nude lip liner when she named this iconic nude she was onto something okay it's like a really beautiful mid-tone brown with the rose hint in it it's just fantastic it looks so good Natasha from Natasha Denona is the next one which is pretty similar but it's a bit more cool toned than iconic nude it has a bit more rose to it and the formulas are different the Charlotte lip liners tend to be a little drier than the Natasha ones the Natasha Denona lip liners have the creamiest formula to them out of any lip liner in my collection the Natasha Denona ones are the creamiest but they're still very pigmented and it's very easy to control them anyways I love that one one that I have not been able to stop using ever since it came out in the springtime and it's the one I'm wearing right now hold on it just fell it's from Anastasia this one also has a bit of a drier formula 
As you can see, it looks kind of similar to Natasha, but a bit more neutral rather than cool toned. And it is my Anastasia lip liner in the shade Muted Mauve. Like I said, this is the one that I am wearing today and I absolutely love it. And then last but not least, another Natasha one that is a bit darker. This one is in the shade Ilona. Take a look right there. I absolutely love this one as well. Really nice and cool toned. It almost has a purpley undertone to it. And so anyways, these four right here, hands down, my favorite lip liners. I use them all the time and I just combine them with different gloss colors over top of them to change up the look a little bit and it just works so great. <laughs> When it comes to a lip gloss slash lip balm type product, nothing caused more of a storm this year than this iconic product right here. This is from YSL and it is the YSL Candy Glaze in the shade 02, which is pretty much almost clear, but it does have a bit of a hint of rose to it. And this is actually what I'm wearing over the Anastasia lip liner today. This is what I've been wearing the entire video, just this beautiful, clear-ish lip balm with the Anastasia lip liner underneath and it gives you this amazing juicy lip look right here. You can combine this with any lip liner you want and it just makes the lip liner melt into like a lip color for you. Plus it feels like a lip balm, it looks like a gloss and it's pretty darn long lasting for having all of those qualities. So besides the lip liners I just mentioned, when it comes to a lip product, my star lip product of this video, my most recommended is this one here. Definitely try it, you will not regret it ever. It's fantastic, it's bougie, I know it's kind of pricey, but the beautiful feel of this one and how juicy it makes your lips look and how it transforms your lip liners into lipsticks. It feels like a lip balm, it lasts for a while. A more perfect lip product just does not exist, okay? It's fantastic. Now, I have been using a lot of glosses as well on top of my lip liners, and I have some of my favorite ones here to show you. The Natasha Denona Gloss in the shade Natasha. Definitely a favorite one of mine because of how beautiful and cool toned it is. I love the hint of rose in this really fantastic cool toned shade from Anastasia, which the Anastasia ones are a little bit more sticky, but it's tolerable still. I like this formula, plus it's very long lasting for a gloss. I love this one here, which is also a cool tone, so I wanted to swatch them next to one another. This is in the shade Deep Taupe. And if you're looking for more rosy colors, also from Anastasia, I love Tan Rose and Dusty Rose. Let's move on to my top three favorite Pat McGrath lip glosses. If you want a baby pink lip look, um, Prima Donna here is definitely my fave. Take a look at that beautiful blue-based pink right there. It's amazing. Sunset Rose right here is a lip gloss color whenever I wear it. You guys always ask me what is on my lips and it's Sunset Rose. Just a fantastic rosy nudie pinkish type of gloss. And lastly, Nude Venus, which is a new addition to my favorite glosses. This one came out during the beginning of summer, end of spring this year, and it instantly became a favorite because I just love that peachy hue that it has. So all of those lip glosses I just mentioned are fantastic. You can't go wrong picking any one of these to put on top of those lip liners I told you about. When it comes to lipstick, I was super close to not even putting a lipstick on this video at all because I haven't been using lipstick all that much lately, but there is one that I have reached for every once in a while, and so I wanted to mention it because I love it, and it's also from YSL. It's this YSL. I think these are called the Oil in Something. Rouge Volute Shine Lipsticks. This is like an old favorite. This lipstick did its rounds around beauty YouTube, like, I don't know, eight, nine years ago. It's in the shade 44 and it's this beautiful baby pink color that has a bit of a shine to it. And it's nice and sheer, so it goes well with my favorite lip liners as well. And so this one I have used quite a bit lately and I wanted to mention it because I love it. Honestly, any of the Volupte Shine lipsticks from YSL, I love those combined with a lip liner and they feel like a balm on the lips and they have a nice shine to them as well. So they're fantastic. I have one last makeup product to show you before we move on to skincare and it is a cheek palette. 
I am, of course, talking about the Hourglass Cheek Palettes that came out this year. My absolute favorite one out of the three is the Jellyfish Palette because I love the natural finish in the bronzer. I love combining both of these blushes here and I love both of the finishing powders. It's actually what I'm wearing on my cheeks today. This is the bronzer I'm wearing on top of the Westman Atelier Contour Stick and my blush is a mixture of both of these blushes here on my cheek, underneath my Charlotte Tilbury highlighter, of course, and I just have been reaching for the Jellyfish palette more than I have ever reached for any of my other hourglass palettes I've ever had before, and it's definitely because of the natural finish in the bronzer. That definitely is the tipping point for me to reach for it all the time, because I just don't love that the rest of them have glowy bronzers rather than natural finish bronzers in them. That's just the thing that did it for me. And honestly, ever since I got the Jellyfish palette, whenever I've done my makeup, I have reached for this one. Moving on to some other products, I'm about to touch on some skincare I've been loving and some fragrances as well. But I wanted to remind you, Sephora Collection is 30% off. So if you love the Sephora Collection brush cleaner, the daily brush spray, this is what I use to clean all of my brushes on a daily basis. Whenever one of my eye brushes is dirty, I spray it with this, clean it on a paper towel, and it is dry, clean, and good to go, okay? So this is the time to restock on your daily brush cleaner spray from Sephora because you can get it with a 30% off discount no matter what membership level you have. And honestly, this is my favorite daily cleaner for my natural hair brushes because there's oils in here which will maintain the quality of your natural hair brushes without them getting dry. For example, I know a lot of people love the Cinema Secrets one and I understand that the Cinema Secrets one cleans your brushes even faster than this one does. However, the Cinema Secrets one is extremely, extremely drying for your natural hair brushes. So if you want something that is going to keep your natural hair brushes hydrated, this right here is what you need. Moving on to skincare, I always talk about my favorite makeup melter, which is the Pharmacy Makeup Melter. The Green Clean, a little bit of this, I melt all of my makeup off with. I clean it with little towelettes and then I'm ready for my cleanser. This does not leave anything behind. It takes care of my mascara and my eyeliner with ease. Everything comes off with it and it doesn't leave residue on my skin, which is why it's been my favorite for years, so highly recommend it still. As far as the rest of my skincare, I've been keeping it so simple lately. I feel like you guys are going to be surprised, but also it's definitely been working wonders for my retinas and my sensitive skin. So some things I have kind of almost stopped doing, not completely, I do it every once in a while, but I haven't been exfoliating as often as I used to. I have not been using BHA, AHA serums, None of that, okay? Because I felt like that was one of the things that was making my sensitive skin even more sensitive. And ever since I cut that out and I kept it as simple as I'm about to show you, I feel like my skin has been thriving. Anyways, I've been using this very gentle cleanser right here from Caudalie. It's, it's called the Vinyl Clean. It's super gentle on the skin and it's actually a mousse. So when you pump it out, it comes out in a foam and then I just rub that foam on my face and it very gently cleanses everything without stripping my skin of moisture so i absolutely love it for daytime serum i have been using this also from caudalie the resveratrol lift and i have been using it for probably eight months now because this is my new bottle that they sent me around two months ago and it's all the way down here already but before i started on this one i was using this exact same product and i fully finished my previous bottle anyways this is a firming and lifting serum i feel like it makes my skin look firm and nice and plump and it's just fantastic and very gentle for my face. For moisturizer during the day, for the most part, I reach for my magic cream. However, there is another daytime moisturizer I have been loving lately, and it is pretty new from Paula's Choice. It is called 
the Palace Choice Barrier Repair Advanced Moisturizer. This has five different peptides and it has ceramides in it. It is extremely gentle for the skin. It's nice and thick, but it still sinks right in. It's a fragrance-free moisturizer. It says that it smooths, it hydrates, and strengthens the skin barrier to visibly improve signs of aging. I've made it a point to use this ever since I received it, and I gotta say, I feel like I see a difference on the redness level on my face. Before I started doing my makeup today, I honestly didn't have much redness on my cheeks at all, and that is very, very rare for me. So I truly feel like keeping a very simple skincare routine has been helping me out. As my nighttime routine for the last several months, I've been using one product and one product only. Obviously, after cleansing my face, you know, I melt my makeup, I do my second cleanse, and then I use just this one product. Actually, I also use the eye cream, so two products. I forgot to bring the eye cream from the bathroom, but the product I'm talking about, and I'll show you both, <laughs> uh, because it's the same product, you'll just pick one depending on your skin type, but it is the Caudalie Premier Crew La Cream. And I have the La Cream Rich and the regular La Cream. The main difference and the only difference between them is definitely the consistency. Because my skin is super dry, I prefer La Cream Rich. However, I did fully use them both. I'm about to show you. Take a good look right there. This is all I've been using for the past several months. It is the loveliest moisturizer and I'll explain to you why. What was I saying? I prefer the Le Cream Rich because my skin is super dry, but if you have normal or combination or oily skin, just go for the regular Le Cream and I promise you, you will love it. So here's why this is the only thing that I've been using, not combining it with any serums or anything. This was developed at Harvard after doing um, research on anti-aging products. So these creams have the main and the most strong anti-aging ingredients built into their formulas. They have peptides, they have retinol, they have like everything you need for anti-aging, they've included in the creams for you to use them at home, which is why they are a little bit on the pricey side. These were sent to me by Caudalie, but during the Sephora sale, I am 99.9% .9 sure I will be making an order for Le Creme Rich right here because as you can see, I am out of both and I need them. These not only keep me fully hydrated throughout the night, but I definitely see an improvement on my forehead lines when I have these. I see an improvement on the elasticity and the plumpness of my skin as well. So honestly could not recommend these enough. And like I said, I haven't been using it with any serums underneath because I feel like the amount of active ingredients these have in them should be enough. And then the second product I've been using is, I'll put a picture right here because I don't feel like going to my bathroom to grab it, but it's the eye cream that comes in this same Caudalie line. So the eye cream has the same active ingredients in it. I just put a little bit underneath the eyes. I do still have some eye cream left still thankfully, um, and it's been working wonders for me. When it comes to hair care, I haven't been doing much to my hair as of lately, but whenever I do reach for something, um, this is the thing I reach for a lot because I can dry my hair and straighten it in one pass. This is the Air Straight from Dyson. This is what I did my hair with today. I washed my hair earlier, and as you can see, my hair is not only fully dry, but it is also pretty straight, and that is because the Air Straight does both things in one for me. This is my favorite thing when I want to do my hair, but I'm very lazy about it, which is most of the time, so I use it a lot. <laughs> So if you like to have straight hair and you want to save time, you don't need to first dry it and then straighten it with this one. You just dry the hair and straighten the hair at the same time in one go and that is fantastic. So I love this. And if you've had your eye on any other Dyson hair products, this is definitely the time to get them while they're on sale, right? The other hair care product I wanted to mention is this right here from Olaplex. This is a clean volume detox dry shampoo. If you are a brunette like me, I find that this one never gives me a white cast. It gives my hair a little bit of volume and it very easily takes away any shine. 
it works like dry shampoos usually work but I feel like a lot of them can be a little bit too thick in your hair and this one's never too thick it just feels light and airy and it feels like you didn't even put any dry shampoo on but the hair is matte and the greasiness is gone plus like I said no white cast on my brunette hair so I absolutely love it lastly I wanted to mention my three go-to fragrances that you can find at Sephora starting with Libre from YSL this has been a favorite one of mine for a while now I've mentioned it in quite a few of these videos and it is sexy and fresh and floral with a bit of woodsiness hidden underneath. If you ever decide to try out Libre from YSL, make sure you spray it on your body and smell it from your body rather than spraying it on like a piece of paper because it truly makes a huge difference. So beautiful and sexy and flowery and like woodsy at the same time. It's fantastic. If you like sweet gourmand scents. I recommend this one here from Valentino. This is the Valentino Born in Roma and this one has a beautiful sweet vanilla -y scent while still having a bit of flower. I don't know that this one has any woods in it but this smells so delicious and so sweet and so yummy. I just absolutely love it. And this next one is my most favorite out of the three or the one that I've been loving most lately because I feel like depending on the time of year my favorite fragrances can change but this one first of all I love for year round and I have been obsessed with it ever since it came out and that is the Prada Milano um, Paradox scent I don't know where to spray it next but this is so sexy it's the most floral out of the three but it's still sweet and it still has a nice woody base to it that makes it smell super freaking sexy this one is actually in the Sephora Favorite fragrance sets. So you can get a Sephora Favorites fragrance set and get the voucher to get a full size of this one for free. And you'll probably save some extra money if you do that. Oh, I love it. I was re-smelling them all to reassess. Out of the three, this is definitely my most favorite one. Okay, I know that was a whole lot. If you are still here at the end of this video, please leave me a fire emoji down below in the comment section so that I know you watched all the way to the end because this was a long video to watch. And I just want to know, I want to know who was here all the way to the end. So leave me fire emojis down in the comment section if you watched all the way through. And I am super thankful if you did. Don't forget to please give the video a thumbs up if you liked it, if you're going to shop for any of the products I suggested. It helps me out a lot if you do so using the links I'm leaving you down below in the description box. I love you all so much. I am exhausted from filming this video. Subscribe if you haven't already. Let me know what you're getting from the Sephora sale and I hope to see you back in the next one. Bye!